yes so very good morning to all of you right so with standard did we complete with yesterday right in our special series of the standards right which was the last standard which we studied over there it was the srs 4410 which is regarding the compilation engagements so we saw more or less everywhere else the chartered accountant has been using his auditing expertise but he as a chartered accountant you are known to be having the auditing and the accounting expertise right so now in case of a compilation engagement the practitioner the ca is making use of his accounting and financial reporting expertise he is assisting the management in the preparation of the financial statements right when the financial statements have to be prepared in accordance with a requirement of any regulator right it is mandatory to prepare the interim financial information or it is not mandatory but management requires it for decision making or they are to be prepared as per the provisions of a contract or there is some loan which has been taken or some grant which has been received for which the financial statements are to be prepared and the client the management is taking the assistance of the ca for the preparation of the financial statements right so in this case the report issued by the chartered accountant is called as the accountant's report on the compilation of the unaudited financial statements right what level of assurance do we given in case of this compilation engagement right do we give any assurance over here right no assurance right what do we say neither an audit nor a review right and no assurance is being expressed right no opinion is being expressed okay right ethical requirements do you need to comply with yes right quality control policies and procedures of your firm yes but only independence is voluntary unless law regulation says that the person needs to be independent who is preparing right otherwise it says independence is voluntary why because it is a non assurance engagement right and again we had the points the acceptance the planning performing the procedures and then the reporting right so again at the acceptance of the engagement right so one whether the ca has the competence and capability to perform this engagement right then for what purpose these financial statements are being prepared and even though if the ca is being appointed for the preparation of the financial statements still there are some responsibilities of the management right like identification of the acceptable afrf management your responsibility right then design implementation maintenance of internal control management your responsibility then to ensure the accuracy and completeness of the accounting records right the records documents information explanation or other information all that continues to be the responsibility of the management and the making of the significant judgments right mainly in the making of the reasonableness of the accounting estimates again that is the responsibility of the management so even though if the ca is preparing the financial statements selection application of accounting policy management your responsibility a reasonableness of accounting estimates management your responsibility okay right so that was acceptance of the engagement and there we had a retail question regarding the management's responsibilities right which has already come in the exams okay then we came to the procedures now here what does it say in the procedures you need two knowledge one you need knowledge of the client's business and second you need the knowledge of the afrf in accordance to which the financial statements are to be prepared right so knowledge of the afrf and the knowledge of the client then after that what you do you start compiling the information right the compiling the financial statements based on the records documents explanation and the other information significant judgments given by the management right made by the management right so you compile then after you compile you also discuss the significant judgments with the management then you read the compiled information for any obvious material misstatements right then if you think that oh this information which they are giving me for doing the compilation engagement is incomplete inaccurate or otherwise unsatisfactory right the ca the practitioner should ask the management to provide the additional or the corrected information if they refuse then ca you withdraw from the engagement right and say when you are performing this compilation engagement and you come to know that the afrf has not been adequately disclosed or there is a material misstatement in these financial statements which are being compiled or otherwise you think that these financial statements are misleading you propose the amendments to the management right if management permits you to make the amendments great 
if they do not permit you to make the amendments then what does it say right again you need to consider withdrawal from the engagement and if you continue with the engagement then you have to mention these points in your accountant's report right so getting your financial statements you know prepared from a chartered accountant is like getting them to be audit ready because ca will check whether all the requirements of the afrf have they been complied with or not right and then after that we talk about the accountant's reports right so title address then on the basis of information provided to you by provided by you we have compiled right so we have compiled the accompanying balance sheet profit and loss cash flow right in accordance with so and so right then after that we say we conduct our engagement in accordance with srs 4410 which is the compilation engagement issued by the icai right then what do we say that this financial information has been properly compiled in agreement with the books of account right what we say balance sheet profit and loss account are in agreement with the books of account but it is neither an audit nor a review and no assurance is being expressed right so that was regarding the compilation engagement right so what are the important takeaways for us for compilation engagement it is the financial reporting and accounting expertise then no assurance then what do we say ethical requirements is a must but what is voluntary independence is voluntary right independence is voluntary and what do we say accountants report on the compilation of the unaudited financial statements okay right so that was our s R S four four one zero, right? So in our chapter number nine, we have two standards over there. The related services. One was S R S four four zero zero, which was regarding the. engagements to perform the agreed upon procedures agreed upon with the management or the specified parties regarding the financial information right and said so whether we give the report of the factual findings and then we had this right standard on related services 4410 which is regarding the compilation engagements okay right so after we completed with our 700 series we completed with 800 2000 3000 and the 4000 series of the Standards, right, and we are done with Chapter Seven A, but we are in the process of discussing the Chapter Seven B, right. So Seven B, one discussion which we had over there was regarding the duties of the company auditor, Section One Forty Three of the Companies Act Two Thousand Thirteen, right. So we talked about the eight duties of the company auditor: duty as to inquiry, One Forty Three Subsection One, six points of inquiry. You report only when you have an adverse finding, no finding. no reporting right then 14333 which is duty as to reporting wherein you have the 10 points of the reporting then duty to report on additional matters specified by the central government 14311 under which the central government has issued the caro 2020 then duty to sign the audit report section 145 that auditor of the company you have to sign the audit report or any document which is required to be authenticated by the auditor of the company and whatever qualifications are there in your audit report or so they should be read out at the agm and also available for the inspection for every member of the company then 1434 duty to give reasons for qualifications adverse remarks in the audit report right so auditor if you are modifying your opinion the reason why you are modifying has to be mentioned in your audit report then 143 subsection 8 duty as to branch audit okay who will do the audit of a branch of a company so we need to check whether the branch is in india or whether it is outside india in india the branch can be audited by company auditor himself or any other person who is qualified to be appointed as an auditor right outside india company auditor himself any other person qualified to be appointed or a person who is duly qualified to act as an auditor as per the laws of that country right as per the laws of that country right branch auditor he submits his report to the company auditor and 14312 duty to report fraud to cg is it also applicable to the branch auditor yes branch auditor if you come to know about any fraud you need to directly report it to the central government obviously if it is 1 crore or above 
right if it is 1 crore or above right the next duty duty to comply with the auditing standards right so what does it say auditor you need to do your audit as per the auditing standards which will be issued by the nafra but till that time the standards which have been issued by the icai and last duty over there 14312 which is duty to report the fraud to central government right if an auditor in the course of performance of his duties as an auditor has reasons to believe that an offence involving fraud which involves an amount of 1 crore or above is being or has been committed against the company by its officers or employees it shall report the matter to the central government in the manner as may be prescribed right so fraud could be less than 1 crore or 1 crore or above 1 crore and above less than 1 crore or 1 crore and above in both cases first thing what you do immediately but not later than 2 days you report the fraud to the audit committee board of directors the nature of the fraud the approximate amount involved and the parties involved and in case if it is less than 1 crore then also in the board report the disclosure has to be given nature of fraud approximate amount involved remedial action taken if any and if no remedial action is taken then the name of the parties but if remedial action is taken then name of parties will not come okay right then after that we come to the fraud which is 1 crore or above so immediately but not later than 2 days you report it to the audit committee or the board of directors and seek for their reply or observation within right seek for their reply or observation within 45 days and then two possibilities they may reply or they may not reply if they reply then within 15 days from the date of reply now what do you do now you do the fraud reporting to the central government the fraud report which you sent to audit committee board their reply and your comments on their reply now you report it to the central government however there is no reply from the audit committee board of directors so now within 15 days after the expiry of the 45 days you report the fraud along with a note that there is no reply of the audit committee board of directors to the central government right the letter has to be addressed to the secretary minister ministry of corporate affairs it has to be sent by registered post or the speed post followed by an email confirmation of the same it has to be on the letter head of the auditor all the contact details membership number seal of the firm has to be given in that particular fraud reporting and also the reporting has to be done in the form adt 4 right adt 4 these provisions mutatis mutandis as the tis are applicable to the secretarial auditor and also applicable to the cost auditor and then after that we said listed entity auditor you don't do the fraud reporting then penalty of 5 lakh and any other company auditor you don't do the reporting then penalty of 1 lakh and nothing will be considered to be contravened if this reporting is done in the good faith okay right so that was 14312 right so what were the first two duties that we discussed 1431 and 1433 right what was 1431 duty as to inquiry right there were the six points of inquiry right so what did we say okay, by default as an auditor do you need to look into the propriety of business conduct do you need to look into the decision making of the management no we have nothing to do with the profitability or you know the prudence or the declaring of dividend not declaring dividend or any decisions of the management what we have to check is whatever decision has been taken whether it is properly reflected in the books of account but this is the thumb rule but then what does it say wherever company law says that ca please look into the propriety then we look into the propriety of the business conduct right so 1431 are the points of the propriety Okay, whether loans and advances are they properly secured, and the terms and condition are they prejudicial, are they harmful, are they detrimental to the interest of the company? Then transactions represented merely by book entries, right? Journal entries. Again, whether they are prejudicial. Then where the company is. Not an investment or a banking company. Share securities debentures have been sold at a price. less than the price at which they were purchased by the company but not applicable for investment banking company d whether any loans and advances have been shown as the deposits then e whether any 
personal expenses have been charged to the revenue account and then f is regarding the shares issued for cash whether cash is actually received and shares issued for consideration other than cash in that case whether the position shown in the balance sheet is it correct is it regular and is it not misleading right so that was the those were the six points of inquiry under 143 and then we had the 10 points of reporting under 143 3 right has anybody has managed or found the time to make any story over there right for our 143 3 did anybody make any story regarding the points which we had discussed yes any one of you okay yes one story is ready i'm so happy okay it will be 143 in three minutes my boss gave me information about a task okay so boss gave me information i got prepared about the i got prepared properly and visited the branch office the boss gave me some information i got prepared and visited the branch office to check their books okay right to check their books and then as for any and the books and as for any adverse remarks i asked the directors about the maintenance of the ifc and the others okay right so wonderful so you've incorporated the section also over there okay it will be 143 in three minutes and my boss gave me the information that i need to visit a branch right so properly i got properly prepared and then i visited the client and then i need to check the accounts and any adverse remarks or so okay right so that's great okay right so what are the 10 points we have over there information proper branch books AES adverse directors maintenance IFC others right so whether we have sought and obtained all the information and explanation whether proper books of account have been kept by the company and returns for the branches not visited by us then whether branch audit report have they been forwarded to the company auditor then whether balance sheet profit and loss account are they in agreement with the books of account then whether financial statements comply with the accounting standards any observations or comments which have an adverse effect and a going concern effect on the functioning of the company whether any directors are disqualified under section 164.2 any qualification adverse remarks regarding the maintenance of accounts whether the company has the adequate internal financial controls and also the operating effectiveness of such control however this reporting will not apply to a private company which is a one person company or a small company or a private company having turnover of less than 50 crore and having the borrowings of less than 25 crore to so this private company statutory auditor you don't need to do the ifc reporting right turnover 50 crore and the borrowings of the not more than 25 crore okay and j over there is the others right such other matters as may be prescribed and under the others we have the seven points of reporting over there right so any story for that one right any content that you have prepared for that right we say 143 3j and then after that we have the a b c d e e1 e2 e3 and then after that the f and the g okay right so okay growth limited had pending litigations in the court okay so pending litigations okay that results in material foreseeable losses so pending litigations material foreseeable losses because of it there was a delay in transferring funds to the investor education and protection fund then growth limited lawyer explained to the judge Right? that no funds have been advanced or no funds have been received and that has been and representations do not contain any material misstatement so they are telling to the lawyer that no funds have been no loans have been advanced no funds have been received representations do not contain any material misstatement we have declared dividend in compliance with section 123 our accounting software is having an audit trail feature it is simple right in simple we have followed all the matters for reporting under 143 3j respected majesty oh my god like you know you can always consider of becoming a lawyer also right so like you know it's literally imbibed in you the you know the aura of a lawyer or so 
okay right so it says the company is having the pending litigations due to which it has the material for feeble losses because of which there is a delay in transferring the funds and before the majesty what are they telling lawyer that no loans have been advanced no funds have been received representations do not contain any material misstatements that we have declared dividend as per section 123 and also saying that our accounting software has an audit trail feature which is otp right which has operated throughout the year which has not been tampered with and which has been preserved as per the statutory requirements for the record retention okay right so everybody are we good with 143.1 and 143.3 143.1 six points of inquiry only if you have an adverse finding you need to report otherwise no reporting required and 143.3 whether you have a finding or you don't have a finding you always need to report right information proper branch books as adverse directors maintenance ifc others and under the others we have the seven points okay right all good everyone yes all good and then after that we came to our discussion on the caro 2020 right so caro has been issued by the central government right so before we study the reporting clauses under caro first we need to understand that to which companies caro reporting is applicable right so what do we say ki caro shall apply to every company including a foreign company except it is possible that for some companies caro may not be applicable right which are the possible companies over there p the private limited companies subject to certain conditions then one person company small company section 8 company insurance company banking company nothing in front of l and e right so osip only o s s i b to these five companies caro reporting never 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 ever applicable and private limited companies subject to certain conditions what are the condition not being a holding or a subsidiary of a public company so above or below the private company there should be no public company if there is a public company above or below then it is a deemed a public company and caro applicable then no need to check for the 1 cr 1 cr and the 10 cr right so not being a holding or a subsidiary of a public company and having paid up share capital and reserves and surplus not exceeding 1 crore as on the balance sheet date total borrowings from banks financial institutions not exceeding 1 crore during the financial year and total revenue as disclosed in schedule 3 including the revenue from the discontinuing operations does not exceed the 10 crore during the financial year right so for a private limited company for caro not to, to be applicable one it should not be a holding or a subsidiary of a public company and second all the three conditions have to be cumulatively satisfied that is paid up share capital reserves and surplus less than 1 crore borrowings less than 1 crore and revenue also less than 10 crore so like say it's 80 lakh 80 lakh and 8 crore then all the three conditions are being fulfilled then it says caro will not be applicable to that private limited company. company right then i gave you one question ke paid up share capital 2 crore and turnover is 20 crore right so is caro applicable 2 crore and 20 crore right paid up share capital 2 crore and turnover 20 crore crore is caro applicable no why because it is fitting into the definition of the small company small company ka definition kya hai paid up share capital not more than 4 crore and turnover not more than 40 crore right so even though it might fight fit into the definition of private company but it is also fitting into the definition of the small company and once you are a small company caro never applicable right caro never applicable is it clear to all of you right everyone yes do you remember so far right so we have to now see ke paid up share capital reserves and surplus what all is included total borrowings and then the total revenue then the questions regarding the applicability of the caro and then we move on to the discussion of the reporting clauses under the caro 2020